All right, excellent. Uh, my name is Deb Quintel. Hello, everyone. Welcome to joining us. Thank you for joining us. I am the Director of Curriculum Development for Cali, and uh, I'm joined today by John Mayer and his pumpkin. John, of course, is our Executive Director. Uh, and of course, our speaker that you have all joined us to hear is Elmer Masters, our Director of Internet Technology, or maybe just Internet or just technology sure. technology right whether whatever form it comes whether it whether it be battery operated via the internet i just know him as elmer so elmer is going to be speaking to us today all about lesson link this session is recorded thank you you can listen to it later and uh, the chat is disabled for your convenience and we have asked that you please put all your questions into question and a we'll answer as many as we can after Elmer finishes his presentation and any leftover questions, uh, we will take and write up some answers for and post somewhere where you can find them at some point. As always, you can tweet about this exciting event at Cali Org. And with that, uh, Elmer, take it away if you would, please. Thank you, Deb. Hi, everybody. Um, so uh, it's a sunny 80 degree afternoon here in middle Georgia. So it's, uh, it's actually, it's quite nice today and I'd rather be outside mowing the lawn. Now we're, we're here, we're doing this. We're going to talk about lesson link today. Um, I have no slides. It's going to be all, um, all demo and, uh, and my talking face. Um, so uh, uh, as we get started here, I'm going to fire up a little, I'm going to fire up a poll um, to uh, get some information about uh, about uh, who's using Lesson Link and what they're doing with it. Um, so I'm launching the poll right now. Um, you should be able to see it. Um, we're going to leave it open for uh, for a couple of minutes while I'm talking here. Um, it's a multiple choice thing, so you can click all of the things that apply, um, and uh, and then we'll uh, we'll we'll get we'll get back into it in just a little bit. So. Um, Real quick um, about Cali, like so. Lesson Link makes use of Cali Lessons, and um, and I never get tired of telling people that Cali Lessons are law faculty authored, peer reviewed, interactive tutorials designed for self paced learning of legal topics with immediate feedback for students. And um, we have over a thousand, well over a thousand of them in over three dozen areas of the law. So there's like plenty of stuff. Um, we don't really have comprehensive coverage in in uh, in a lot of those topics. But you know, in the first year in the first year subject areas, um, we have we're uh, we're you know pretty good. So I just want to give you that quick background on lessons um, before I spend uh, a bunch of time talking about how to use them. So is some idea about what they are. Um, so lesson link, lesson link is how you assign Cali lessons to your students. Um, so uh, let's uh, wrap up the poll here in about five seconds. I'll have it open for a minute and a half. That should be, um, that should be pretty good. So we'll click the end polling button and I'm going to uh, share the results. And uh, I'll take a quick flip through this. And I see that the most popular response is I haven't used it. Good, actually, because um, uh, hopefully after uh, this uh, quick demo, you'll, you know, you'll take a look at it and, uh, uh, you know, and, and give it a whirl yourself. Um, so uh, let me just make sure we've got everything squared away here before I start sharing a screen. Leave the so, poll so, for one more second. Yeah, I'm going to leave the poll up here for, for a little bit and um, I get all of my browser windows opened appropriately because I've got uh, we're trying hopefully well <laughs> I think everybody knows how software demos usually go but this one is web-based so that should make it a little bit better so yeah so I haven't used it's the number one uh, the number one response there and then um, uh, with 41 percent I'm not surprised um, uh, and then uh, uh, the next uh, the next thing is um, that uh, you don't use it, but you assign or recommend Cali lessons to your students. 
and that's what a lot of faculty uh, do. They just say, you know, here's a lesson if you want, you know, it's helpful or you should go take a look at it or, or that sort of thing. And then students can go and run them. They don't need lesson link to run lessons. They can just run as many lessons as they want, as often as they want. Um, so, uh, and 24% said I'm using it this semester, which is awesome. Um, we've got a couple of hundred, uh, well, uh, about uh, over 250 folks using it this semester from about 124 schools. So um, it's uh, it's pretty popular. Um, but the uh, uh, so that's um, so that's a big deal. And then um, let me see what else. So that's pretty good. And then of course 24 people percent of people are saying they're planning and using it in the future. Excellent. Um, we I, I will tell you that uh, I'm going to stop sharing this right now, and we'll. We'll save those for, um, we'll have those later and, and I'll, we'll post those results in case people wanna look at them later too. Um, right now, more people than ever are using Lesson Link and, um, and it's really helping drive us to, um, you know, what is actually our busiest semester um, for, for lesson usage in the past 10 years. So keep up the good work. So now we're gonna do a demo on just how you work your way through uh, through uh, Lesson Link. Um, so I'm going to uh, do a screen share here. And we'll just click all the buttons. All righty. So now you should be able to, uh, you should be able to see my screen. Excellent. Okay. Um, so, uh, so what we're looking at is the, uh, the Lesson Link page that that appears in the uh, from the drop down menu under uh, Kelly dashboard. Um, so uh, you need to be you need to have a Kali account and you need to be logged in in order to do this. And your students, of course, need to have Kali accounts and be logged in in order to see and run uh, and run Kali or in order to run Kali lessons. So we're going to start right at the top. Um, uh, I've, over the last uh, couple of weeks, we've um, I've actually uh, revamped the interface here a little bit and kind of cleaned it up and added, um, gotten rid of the list of links and replaced it with like shiny buttons. Well, they're not shiny, but with buttons and stuff so that it has kind of a, a more modern uh, sort of look to it. So, um, so a new feature is the create new lesson links button is on like all the lesson link pages. So, um, so we're just going to start there. Um, to create new uh, new lesson links. So um, uh, this is just a, a pretty straightforward form to fill out, right? So it, it asks for a few things. Um, there is a little bit of help that um, is stashed behind the help button here. And so you can, um, you know, like uh, for example, a reminder that uh, students have to use the lesson link link in order for you to see their grades and results. If if they just go and run the lesson, then you can't see them and um, you can't see the results. Um, it's less of a problem than it used to be because of some changes we made to the um, to uh, to the website. So that it's actually easier for faculty to share the links and for students to follow them. So, um, but that little bit of help is there in case you in case you need it. Um, there's also a, a short section here if you if you actually uh, have multiple uh, lesson links for multiple courses, um, they'll turn up here in case you want to just um, edit an existing set. You can sort of get to that from here also. Um, but we'll get uh, we'll get on with um, with creating lesson links. So um, first of all, we need to give it a course name. Um, I'm fond of law followed by some number, and we'll go with 789. Um, if you have a course website, um, you can include it here. Um, this is optional. You don't have to. Most people don't, so it's not too big a deal. Um, it default. Uh, then you select the semester. It defaults to the uh, to the current semester, which is fall 2020. Um, but you can, if you're if you're beginning to work now on uh, on stuff for next uh, next semester, for over the winter or in the spring. Um, you can actually create stuff for spring of 2021 um, now, or even next summer if you if you want to. We'll stick with fall 2020. Um, then we are going to uh, scroll down here a little bit. We'll pick the, uh, we'll select a topic. Um, so I'm going to look for, um, I wanna do, let's say property law. So I'll just start typing. 
Um, and uh, let's see, and we'll pick property from the list. So this sort of, as you start typing a topic, it actually kind of does a little search for you through the Cali topics. Um, and, uh, and then we can pick that. And then it gives us this long list of, of lessons. Um, and, uh, and, then, and then from this list, you can select what you're, what, you're, what you're looking for. Now, if you've never looked at Cali lessons before, I would suggest that you actually start by um, kind of uh, uh, rather than jumping in right here. Um, I would actually uh, I would actually recommend that you um, start by taking a look at browsing lessons either by the first year grouping or or um, or by topics or even subject outlines so that you get an idea of what we have because like I said, there's over a thousand of them. We cover a lot of ground in a lot of subjects. Um, but if you've already done that and you're sort of looking, you just want to, you know, sort of have a refresher, um, there's a little info link next to every title. You can click on that and that'll give you uh, the descriptions, the learning outcomes for the lesson, um, how much time your students can expect to, uh, uh, expect to spend on the lesson and who the lesson authors are. Um, there's also a stray button at the bottom. That's a bug. It doesn't do anything. Um, and I'm trying, I'm working on trying to make it go away if I could actually figure out where it's coming from. But I don't know. Um, and that's that's the truth. It's really weird. It's the mystery button, but there it is. Um, and then uh, when you're done, you can close that. So we'll select bailments. Um, we'll work down the list here a little bit. Um, let's try um, express easements. Um, Future interest rules, always popular in property. Um, so you can just basically scroll down, um, scroll down the list here. Um, and, uh, you know, let's also hit the estate system at the bottom. When you get to the bottom, the list can be long depending on the topic. Um, you do have to click, uh, you know, click the submit button. And that basically creates your set of lesson links. Now that takes you to the courses page. Um, which uh, which lays out um, uh, this is the page that basically has your has your lesson links on it. Um, for teachers, it also provides a um, it also provides a uh, a small administrative area at the top um, where you can get to uh, you can get to different uh, to do different things like look at student grades um, and uh, uh, edit and add lesson links and clone the set. And you can also go back to the to the big page. Um, what the students see when they look at this, and we'll just make a quick copy of this of this link, and we'll go over to another browser window. This particular browser window is logged in as a student, so we can see what students look like. So when a student looks at the at the same list, they don't, all they see are the links. So they don't see all of those the buttons for editing and all that. The only person who can see those is you when you create the, uh, you know, because you created the, uh, you created the links. Um, it also sends you an email, and we can take a quick look at, uh, take a quick look at that. Um, so you should get an email when you create a set of lesson links um, that has all of this in it. Um, it basically sends you the links, um, and you can copy and paste them, or you could forward this email to your students. Um, you know, however you would uh, uh, like to do that. Um, and, uh, you know, so, so, you know, you can copy each individual um, link and, and paste it into your LMS, um, paste it into, um, you know, if you just have like a course website, um, or you could email them out one at a time if you want, however you want to sort of, you know, uh, set those up. Because one of the things that this page doesn't yet allow you to do is put them in any particular order, okay? They're basically showing up in the order of, um, like if you notice that this particular element, you'll see like here it says 593, this is 607. Those are the identifiers for the lessons. And that's the order that it shows them in on this page. I'm working on a set of features that'll allow you to put these in, in the order um, that you would like students to run them, um, and uh, uh, and that'll um, and that'll be a help. And I, I, I expect to have that ready for the spring, but fingers crossed. 
so um so that's the uh that's the big um the getting stuff created so um we can go back to the main lesson links page from there um so now uh, you'll notice that this page um basically gives you a list of all of the sets of lesson links that you've created for this semester. Um, so if you're teaching a couple of different courses um, or, you know, uh, a couple of different sections of the same, the same class, you can create different sets of lesson links or even the same set of lesson links for different classes so that you can keep, um, you can keep them uh, organized uh, by that, by that, that student grouping. So on this page, uh, looking at this little table here, um, let me scroll down to one that has some numbers on it. So, so uh, the number of runs uh, column is the number of times that students have clicked on the link and actually run the lesson. Okay. Um, now that doesn't, um, students can run them more than once. So, um, so if you have 12 students and this number gets to, you know, uh, you know, at 28, that just means that um, chances are your students have run the lesson more than once. Um, and uh, uh, that happens less these days, um, for the most part, than it used to, um, but, um, but still happens. So, um, so folks can, folks can do that. And then you can actually see the grades for a particular, uh, for a particular uh, uh, lesson. Um, by clicking on the grades button. Um, and then basically, uh, this tells me a whole lot of nothing because I'm not an actual student. But if I was, um, you would see that the date that they, the, the date that they worked on the lesson, um, what their grade was if they, um, if they actually, uh, if they actually worked on the lesson. Sometimes they do and don't. Um, the number of questions that they answered, the number that were correct, and then the total number in the lesson. Um, again, um, you know, you may see uh, sometimes the lessons are a little complicated, and so the answered and correct, um, the answered totals might not, or the, the number of questions answered might not equal the total number of questions in a lesson. The lessons, uh, a lot of lessons are complicated. They have branching. So um, a student may answer a question and it would move them to another part and they may not see three or four questions just because of just based on their answer to a particular one. Um, and, and we do get, um, we do hear from students about that quite a bit who are concerned that maybe they had missed some work and stuff. So, um, but there's that. And then uh, let's see, we can go back to, we'll go back to lesson link. Um, you can also download um, using uh, for each individual lesson. You can download the grades um, and uh, uh, open that up in Excel or your favorite spreadsheet program. Um, you can also get all of the grades uh, for a course uh, for all of the lessons. So uh, the button at the top there that says "Download All Grades for This Course" that's that's like everything. So that will that will download. Um, for all of the lessons that that you've assigned, all of the student uh, student grades for that, as opposed to doing it lesson by lesson, um, you can't share this with anybody. So, um, if you have a teaching assistant who's helping you with grades, they can't see this page um, because you created it. Um, and, uh, and so the way to get them the grades, if, if you want them to, to sort of compile them in a grade book or something like that, or check to see that students are doing them, would be for you to download the spreadsheet and share it with your teaching assistant. Um, adding the ability to share with a teaching assistant is, um, is on our, our list of things to do. Um, I'm not sure if we'll, if that'll be ready for next semester or not, though. But it is it is something that we're working on because it is a, a feature that that uh, uh, folks request quite a bit. And then uh, the last column takes you into the lesson analytics, um, which is a much more in depth look at how um, how things work, um, how students reply and uh, respond to lessons and. Um, and it shows you comparisons for the entire class and all that sort of stuff. And we're going to get into that more next week. 
Um, so next Friday's uh, uh, webinar, Costumes Optional, um, is, uh, is going to be about lesson live and, uh, and lesson analytics. So we'll get in depth on that, um, on that next week. Um, so, uh, let's see. Elmer, can I jump in yes. here with a couple sure, of questions? Deborah. Sure. Uh, so there's a question that if you have multiple sections of the same course, can you, mm -hmm. what you have done from one to the other or do yes. you go in and select? So I answered yes. And I promised people that you would demo how to do that. Right, and, we're, and we'll get, uh, that's cloning lesson links, and we're going to get to that, yes. Oh, okay, thank you. Yep. Um, okay, is that, uh, any any other ones, Deb, or? Well, oh, no, I'll one? assume you get okay. to the other ones, too. Okay. I, I don't um, want to spoil anything else. <laughs> <laughs> but, Deb, that's your job. That's why you're, like, our, our corporate counsel. You ruin all <laughs> the fun. Yeah, it's nice. Um, <laughs> Carry so, on. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I will. Um, so, uh, so let's take a look at, so you've created a set of lesson links and you'd like to add to it because as you notice, you can pick one topic um, as you're, um, as you're moving through things. So, um, so if you want to uh, want to add lessons from another topic, or if you want to remove some of them that you already have, um, you can do that from here. Um, so you click on the, uh, the edit add link and it opens up a nice, uh, nice form here. Um, you can change the name of the course. This allows for typos because that happens, right? Um, you can add or remove the course website if you want to. Um, let's say uh, we decided we don't really need the bailments, um, the bailments uh, title. So we'll, we'll take that away. Um, and then let's say we want to add, so we can add things from any topic. But say you've created a say you've created a lesson with uh, with Cali Author on the web and published it. You can actually add those to lesson link sets. Um, so you can add uh, Cali Author lessons that you create, and you can also add quiz quiz right quizzes that you create can be added to lesson link also. So um, to find those, um, you the the quickest way. Well, they're listed under your Cali Library resources which I know is, is very wordy and doesn't, and isn't like really sort of easy to remember. So I'll come up with something else, but for right now, they're listed under your Cali Library resources. And if we click on that, that'll show you all of the things that you've created and published to the website. So um, if you had done auto-publish lessons um, prior, to, uh, prior to last February, um, the uh, they would be listed here if you've created quizzes with Quizrite or self-published lessons with Cali Author Web. Um, you can you'll be able to select those here and add them to your course. So I'm going to click this. Um, you could uh, you could select other uh, other topics at this point too. Um, we're just going to do this one real quick and we'll hit the submit button. And then this takes us back to that courses page. So it's, it's still the same, it's still the same URL, that doesn't change. Um, what did change was um, the list of lessons. So the bailment lesson left and we brought back lesson link or uh, a lesson link lesson, which is a, um, a self-published uh, self lesson. And then um, you also uh, get another email, which we're gonna hit down here. Um, which uh, basically shows you the list of the list of, of the complete set of listed lesson links, but the complete set of lesson links that you've created. So um, it took away bailments and it added the lesson link lesson um, to that uh, to that list. And by the way, if you do this and you don't get the email, um, you should check your spam folder, okay? Um, because um, our email, uh, our, our, all of our web uh, uh, stuff is in the Amazon cloud, including the mail system. So when things get mailed from our website um, back to your school, they're coming from the Amazon cloud. And it's not terribly unusual for uh, university uh, email administrators to have banned all mail from the Amazon cloud flat out as being potentially evil. So... So it ends up in, it could end up in your spam uh, uh, folder. And if that does happen, um, if you would be so kind as to check with your local email administrators, 
uh, your local tech support folks and ask them if, if they could whitelist webmaster at kelly.org, that'd be really helpful for us. Um, uh, and if it doesn't show up, period, like after, you know, a half hour or so, definitely drop me an email um, and, and let me know and I'll, I'll look into it because there could be something up. Um, and, you know, we do, uh, we do need to be able to mail stuff around. So, um, so that's the, that's how you edit and add links uh, to, uh, to things. Um, and we'll go back to the, uh, we'll go back to the main page here. Now, if you have two sections, right, of the same, and you want to use the same set of, of, of lessons for each section, or if you're, uh, uh, you know, if you're going to be teaching the same uh, thing in the fall or in the spring, rather, of 2021, or even in the fall of 2021, and you want to be able to go and, and clone, you know, make a copy of that same set of, of, of links, you don't have to check all the little boxes and stuff. There's a button for that. So we'll click on clone lesson links. And that makes a copy of um, of the whole thing. Um, you can leave the course name the same because what will happen is, is it's creating a whole new set. So there'll be a different URL. So if you teach Law 789 every fall, you don't really have to change that. But let's say I have two sections of, um, of uh, 789. So I'm going to make this one 789B. Um, and, uh, and we can leave everything else the same, um, or we can add, uh, let's add something from contracts. So let's add something about, uh, drafting with and or, or why not? Um, and then again, uh, you know, we hit the submit button. So this has now created a new set of links for uh for this next uh for this next session for 789b um so uh you'll notice that the url for courses you know is now seven uh, 7423 the other one was 7421 um that means somebody else created another set of lesson links in between there um so uh so let's see 7223 so if i'm a student in 789B, that's what that looks like. Okay. Um, and then that way you could just keep using the same set every semester. Um, we don't recommend that you use, that you, um, we, we recommend that you either clone or create a new set every semester because what happens is the, um, if you just keep using the same one year after year after year, it becomes difficult to sort out the students um, in the, you know, as you look at, as you look at the list, cause it'll just keep growing, um, and just keep getting bigger. And that's, and that's, a uh, that's a bit of a problem. Um, and one thing to mention, um, is, uh, this little box on the side here, my Cali courses. So what happens is when somebody follows a link for this page, cause we don't know who's in your class, right? We don't track that. Um, we don't ask the registrars to upload that stuff or anything like that. So, um, so we don't know who's in your class. But if they happen to click on the link for the course um, that you provide, if you if you decide to use that, um, they will show up on a list then that that um, that turns up both on the student side and um, and also on your in your space, so that you know you can you can move around uh, through stuff there. Um, so let me see where we're at here. Um, let's see, I already did. I already talked about grades. So um, adding stuff to an LMS, um, the easiest way to do it is, um, is, to, uh, is to actually just make a copy of, you know, just copy this link and paste it into Canvas or Moodle or Sakai or Blackboard. Um, the one thing that you should do, though, is, is check and make sure that the link is set up so that it opens in a new tab or window, um, because sometimes, uh, depending on how your LMS is configured, it might put a frame around the lesson, and that messes with our cookies, um, and it it, uh, it sort of shows itself in the in the part where students say that they followed the link, and it keeps telling them to log in. 
for example, would be one example of, of an issue with cookies. Um, uh, but so that's the big thing. Make sure it opens in a new in a new tab or window, and then that avoids that particular problem. Um, another thing that comes up is when students run uh, when students run a lesson, like how do they know that they're doing the lesson link lesson, right? So there's a couple of things you could remind them of. You could tell them to to look for the word lesson link in the in the URL. That's that's a giveaway. Um, the other thing is is when they run a lesson. Um, they, uh, there's actually a big logo at the top that says lesson link. So that's how students know, can know that they're running a lesson link lesson. And that means you'll be able to see the grades. Okay. If it doesn't say lesson link at the top, then, uh, then they can't, uh, then you're not going to be able to see the grade. Um, so, uh, so for example, this one we ran, it has lesson link. Um, and so that's fine. Um, if the student just went and dug up the lesson on their own for some reason, um, let's back out of here. Um, so let's say they went and they, they did a search for drafting uh, with and or, um, and let's see, that should turn up the lesson. So there's the lesson. If the student just goes in this way, um, and uh, and runs the lesson. Um, they click on the start lesson button. Now notice the lesson link is gone. So that means that the student can do this lesson and they'll be able to see the score, but you won't be able to see the score. Um, and we don't have a facility for, for linking those together. So if a student, you know, if you assign a lesson, um, and the student doesn't run the lesson link, but says, but I did the lesson, um, then it's up to you to decide what you want to do about that. Because you can, um, the student can generate a certificate um, at the end of, uh, at the end of the, at the end of the lesson, you could accept that if you want to. Um, and some of you who just assign lessons, but don't use lesson link may already be doing that. You may just be, um, you know, asking students to submit the certificates that turn up when they complete um, when they complete a lesson at the end. And from the student's point of view, they can see whether or not it was a lesson link, you know, on this, on their, when they're looking at their results by whether or not there's a professor name there. If there's no professor, then that means they didn't run a lesson link. So, um, and that is all I have on this. And, and I think we're, I think we're ready for some questions. I've got um, a couple of questions here for you, Elmer. All right, far away, Deb. First of all, um, could you um, explain why my courses might vanish at the end of the semester and, and remind me where I could find those? Oh, thanks for asking that question, Deb, because I forgot about the uh, about the archive part. And I even have that on my, you now. see, sometimes you have an outline and you still miss it. So when you're on the lesson link page, um, there are four tabs across the top. Um, the, the main one, which has uh, everything for this semester, the create lesson links, which is the, the, the tab for, for getting started, your current lesson links, which looks a lot like the main lesson link page, and then lesson link archives. So the lesson link archives is where your stuff goes um, at the end of the semester. So um, the, uh, and the semester switch over points, for those of you who are interested in knowing, um, the fall semester starts on, uh, and, and we do this, we, we know that this doesn't match up with any actual real live school. So we have like a disclaimer, no law school schedules were hurt in selecting when semesters begin and end. Um, but obviously, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a, a moving target, but um, so sometimes stuff might move around, but for the fall semester, um, in our system starts on August 1st and ends on December 31st. The spring semester begins on January 1 and ends on May 15th. 
Um, and then the, and that's a change, by the way, from May 1st, we pushed it back to May 15th. So, um, so if it, last year, um, some people had some stuff roll over and then they kind of were wondering where it went. That's where it went. Um, so May 15th, and then the summer semester runs from May 15th to July 31st or 30th or however many days there are in July, the last day in July. So those are the three things. So what happens is on those days, the, the, um, the lesson links that are set that that are under this area actually then move to the archive space so that's where you can find them and but, they and they go all the way back then i've got another couple questions here for you mm -hmm. yep. could could you show uh well a quick one first um using an lms such as canvas um so i sent the link to the faq about using LMSs to people in the chat, um, but also um, the links are able, could you take us to the page where links can be copied individually to be pasted into the LMS just so people get a, a visual memory of that? That would be helpful, I think. And then if they read- Right, set. So yeah, thank you. Yes, so that's on, so you can either, you can get those out of the email, right? So the, the, the plain text links are in the email, so you can copy and paste from the email that gets sent. Um, or um, if your if your mail system is doing weird things to links, which they do, um, from the from the lesson link page here, you can click on View Lesson Links, and that's for this course, and that opens the course page, and then you can just copy these links, right? So either a, a right click, excuse me, a, a right click and copy link address. Um, we'll then, you know, we'll then create something that, you know, that'll be, and then you can paste that into, um, into Canvas, or you can do the um, highlight the text. Just make sure you get it all um, and nothing extra, and then do a copy of that, and then that's the same thing that'll allow you to to paste that into um, into something else. So I can paste it into an email to my students, or I could paste it directly into my LMS. But I believe I should be um, uh, that I should never paste it into a Word document, correct? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yes, please don't ever post them into Word documents. So there's a there's a there's a long running and very ancient bug in Word that that really messes with the way that links work um, for things that require logins, like Cali lessons, um, and it just it just doesn't work right. So. Um, and we haven't seen it. Um, uh, we, this is actually something that hasn't come up um, uh, recently because not so many people are using are, are doing that anymore, right? Because people are using their LMSs or they're using you know web pages or email more, and they're not just sending out Word documents to their students. So um, they'll work fine in PDFs. So so if you so this is kind of a, a workaround. If you if you put them in a Word document. Um, you can then uh, print that to PDF or export it to PDF, and the link should work from the PDF. Um, but there, but the, the it's just it's a problem in Word. So um, I, I'm going to ask a long question here, so you can take a, a sip of your beverage, and I'll distract people by bringing my camera live. Um, so let's talk about the benefits of faculty view as a feature because you pointed out the little info uh, button or tab or word, whatever you want to call it. If I'm unfamiliar with a lesson, I can't remember exactly what's in Bailman. Right. I want to see it in more detail. So the way I tell people is go to lessons, go to subject outline, find property, find bailments. And then if you want to show us from there. So this is the, the, the short version, but I can't see the full faculty view from here, I don't think. And I'm interested- Right, you cannot, yes. right. Right, so I need to open another browser window, I think, um, and, and then find my subject outline. Right, and, and or, well, one thing, one thing you can do is, you know, you can, you can just do a search. So we're, we're looking at, it was uh, drafting. We'll stick with this one. Okay. Drafting with and or. Um, so, okay, so what Deb's talking about is we do have a detailed version of sort of the lessons that's the sort of a, well, it's called faculty view. Um, so 
Um, so if you're looking at, and this is another reason to browse through the lessons themselves as opposed to just looking at that little info box. So, so when a faculty member is on a, on a lesson page and they're logged in, there's a teaching guide that, um, that appears. And one of, the thing that, one of the things that's available there is the faculty view. And that basically gives you all the information that we have about, it's basically looking inside the lesson, right? So, so it shows you, um, you know, it shows you the entirety um, of, the, um, of the lesson. Um, and, uh, and, and maybe a, a, a subject for a future uh, webinar would be a, a longer look at, at all of the things that are in here. But, but this lets you get into a lesson basically, and you can see all the questions, all the answers. Um, you can see them in the context You can click on the view in lesson link, view in the lesson, and that'll actually open up the lesson and you'll be able to look at it. Um, there is a, um, there's a mapper available that gives you a, a broader, um, uh, gives you an overview of what the whole thing looks like um, so that you can see how complicated a lesson might be. Um, so there's a lot going on here. So this is the, the faculty view um, that, uh, you know, I mean, you know, and it gives you basically everything you need to know about a lesson and, and is invaluable for trying to make decisions about, you know, is this something that I want to use in my course? Um, where does it fit in? Um, you know, what can I use it? How can I, uh, you know, can I use, is this lesson, uh, you know, uh, you know, is doing, will doing this lesson uh, replace like 10 minutes of lecture time um, so that, um, you know, the students learn from the lesson and then that frees up lecture time for or, or class meeting time for talking about something else. And speaking of class time and, and freeing up lecture time and things like that, is there a number, is there a limit to the number of lessons that you can add to lesson link for your course? No. <laughs> Excellent. So, um, and, so but, uh, go ahead. Sorry. And so, so as a, as a test of this earlier and, and using a different account, so I don't have it to show off. Um, we actually added all contracts lessons, which are like 97 of them or something like that. All Close. contracts lessons to a single set of lesson links. Now, of course, the thing about it is, is that again, it's it's a gigantic list, and um, you know the 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 um, you know these do take time. Um, so you know, assigning you know ninety seven lessons, um, you know, involves um, you know a lot of student time. I mean, probably more time than they would spend reading their casebook, for example. Right. Um, I to, always to tell faculty, yeah. I tell faculty assigning all the lessons in, is analogous to assigning uh, your favorite case book, your second favorite case book, and then all the supplements you've ever heard um, or seen uh, on Amazon. All right. Um, another question. If I'm visiting, uh, I, I'm teaching this fall semester and I have a great set of lesson links and now I'm going to be visiting at a school in spring and I'm going to be using their credentials for my Cali account at their school. What happens to my lesson links? Will they travel with me or uh, my archived ones? Okay. So this is actually. I, I need re-credentials is the, the short version. Yeah. So um, the best thing to do. So, so first of all, if you're only going to visit a school for, um, for, for one semester, I just recommend just using your um your just continues your same account um the account belongs to you like this is kind of hard to hard to explain sort of but but the accounts are tied to the person who creates it right so so what you can do is you can contact us and we'll update your information with the school that you're visiting at and then all of your stuff will just follow with you right or you could continue using your account as it is. Um, and that'll work too, because the students, um, any student who sees, uh, who, who, you know, who gets a link for, you know, for the, the set, of, uh, the set of, of, of lessons that you create, you'll be able to, you know, once they run that, you'll be able to see those, um, see those grades. Um, but if you want to, if you want to make sure that you're associated with the school for, 
um, for uh, sort of statistical purposes, yeah, just uh, send an email to um, to webmaster at cali.org, um, you know, with like sort of the effective dates of when you want that to happen. And we'll change your, um, we'll change your uh, uh, affiliation in our system and all of your stuff will travel with you. Because if you create a new account, then that's a brand new account and, and you won't, you know, you won't have your, your uh, whatever historical stuff you have, so. So my next question, Elmer, is from a professor who is using Lesson Link, uh, and this is what they write. My students said when they went to review their old Cali lesson using Lesson Link, the students had to retake the whole quiz and could not review their previous submission. Can you explain that? That last question was me. <laughs> Can I I assume, it's, it's a question, but I, I know. You right. Know um, so, so, so this is, um, this is a little bit, also a little bit complicated. Um, when you, when you run it, let me just jump over to the student side of things. So, so when you, when you run a lesson, if you don't complete it, right? So if you don't mark it complete, you can always resume it at the point that you, there's no review function, I guess is the big is the big thing, right? So once you've done a, once you've done a, a Cali lesson and you've marked it as complete, um, then basically all you can see is your score, right? Um, and that's that's accessible for students from this is their, the, the My Lesson Runs page. This is where students see their results, okay? So, so um, I can click on the score and that will uh, that'll tell me, um, you know, I uh, the questions that uh, the questions that I've answered, and how they're um, and how they're scored, right? Um, and so, so this is the kind of review that they have. Now, if they haven't marked the lesson as complete, which that one wasn't marked as complete, they can click on the resume link, and that will um, will start the will will actually put them back in the lesson at sort of the position where they left off. Now, if they go backwards um, into sections that they've already visited, they won't see, it doesn't like replay the lesson at all. Does it change their score when they answer the question again? No, it doesn't change their score when they answer the question again. It will change the score of any questions that they haven't answered. Mm -hmm. But it won't change the score of questions that they that they haven't answered or that they have no already eraser. answered. There's no There's eraser. There's no eraser. There's no review function, and we've actually had um, uh, this was actually a thing that 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 come up uh, rarely in the past, but has come up quite a bit this semester from students who aren't quite sure how to you know sort of how to navigate around um, inside of inside of lessons. Um, and uh, and that's the and that's the thing. So so once they do a lesson, it's essentially done, um, and they can resume. But it picks up where they left off, um, and it doesn't allow them to kind of go back um, and take a and take a look at things. Um, there's also, you know, another thing that we have um, uh, that that's a sort of a warning to students if they're inside of a lesson and they get. Um, they feel like they're kind of like boxed in or they're not quite sure what they what to do. And they do a uh, and if they refresh the, the web browser at that point, um, they uh, they it will wipe out their score. And depending on the browser, um, it may or may not give them an alert. So now you notice that that says zero zero. And if I exit out of here. Um, and now you can see that was bad battery. I still have the hundred. It's still, so it saved the score here, but it, it reset the, the browser. And if they had continued to work on it, the score wouldn't have gotten corrected. Right. And, you know, um, and so there, there are issues around the things that students do in their web browsers. Um, you know, uh, cause one of the things that happens is students aren't aware of the resume feature, for example, seems to be a big thing that students don't know about. They don't know about this page 
and um, and the fact that they can stop and restart a lesson. They don't need to work through the whole thing. And then they also can't review the score. They're free to run the lesson again, obviously, um, but they don't always, um, you know, but it, but it's, there's no, like no review function. We are looking at that. It's like technically a little complicated um, to try and figure, you know, uh, uh, to sort of like reload the lesson and, and get all the things uh, sorted back up. I think what is a related question here, Elmer, um, mm -hmm. let's go into the, um, the math aspects of how scores are calculated. We got a question on that. So let's, let's take a, a Cali lesson and suppose that it has 10 questions. Um, and if I come in as a student and I answer four of the questions and I get them all correct, um, and I hit complete and I'm so excited, I go off and socially distance celebrate. Um, mm -hmm. and John comes along uh, and he runs the version of the lesson um, and he gets the first four questions right, but he continues with a lesson and does the remaining six questions, which unfortunately, John, you did not get correct. So as the faculty member, I believe it's going to show up that I have a score of 100%. Uh, John has a sad face and he has 40%. Um, yeah. John attempted more questions. So what should the faculty do to make sure that the student has not just answered one question amazingly well, but instead has participated in the whole exciting lesson by answering all the questions? So... <laughs> um tell the student to work through the whole lesson. I mean, right. the, so there's, the, the there's faculty not... member, right. The thing is the faculty member doesn't are, always know um, how right. many questions, but your number here that you're seeing here um, is kind of helpful because something right. that this was not um, Elmer and all of his Elmer friends working through this lesson, as a faculty member, I could scroll down this list seeing the right hand total column. And if the numbers are varying greatly, I know that the students are not, that the students are completely shy of answering all the questions. Although it is possible to complete every question presented to you and presented to you is the key word here. Every question presented to you with branching lessons um, and get a hundred percent, but you may have answered fewer or lesser questions uh, than your student classmate because of paths you take in the lesson. So I always advise faculty just um, use a little bit of common sense if the numbers and the total column are varying greatly. Well, actually, Deb, it's the, the total is the actual number of questions in the lesson, in the total oh, column. Oh, perfect. Great. Then, so then, so then what they the want to be looking for, right, what they want to be yeah, looking correct, for correct. are the answered, um, the answered column. Right. right. So, so that's the, that's the number that they answered. So, so the, the, uh, the number answered and the total number should be for the majority of lessons should be the same. Right. Um, if, uh, if they're not, then that may indicate that the student either skipped a question or, um, and, and again, yeah, or, well, it, 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 it again, lesson dependent, but if you're looking at a class of 10 people and you're running a lesson that has 11 questions and, you know, and nine people answered 11 questions and, uh, you know, uh, one other person only answered three, then they didn't do the lesson. Right. So um, so that's up to the teacher to look at the results and say, hey, you left a whole bunch of stuff blank. I can see that because everybody else did the 11 questions. You only did three. You know, you need to, you need to correct that. Mm -hmm. So, so part of it is, um, part of it is not, um, you know, there's, there's no way for us to enforce uh, the students actually work through the lesson. That's not how things are designed. And it's not how the website, uh, the, the, the lesson viewers put together, right? It's self-paced learning. So people can stop and start um, and, uh, you know, and those sorts of things. But the, um, you know, and, and again, the, the teacher could look at the lesson beforehand and say, and let the students know there are a total of 11 questions in this 
uh, in this lesson. Um, you know, so so keep that in mind when you're answering things. Um, you know, so um, and partly, you know, now and uh, and just as a side note, um, you know, uh, the uh, there's a problem with the Cali website. Is the 21st version of the dog ate my homework in legal education? So um, <laughs> uh, it does come up sometimes that people will say, like, you know, I got stuck, or I, I you know, I ran, you know, well, and and um, and a lot of times they're, you know, they just need to keep working, um, you know, and uh, so so it's sort of a matter of comparing what other students have done to the one who you think maybe hasn't done it enough. But that's up to the teacher to enforce. Great, um, and uh, we're we're just a couple minutes before the hour here. I know we wanted to keep it to an hour, so um, I know we want to encourage everyone to come back and join us next Friday, uh, where we're discussing the hauntingly frightening, exciting topic of analytics. I believe. Yeah, and Cali Lesson Live, which is how to run these lessons live in a class. Um, right. And then right. as, as sort of a gateway to the analytics, um, uh, uh, analytics stuff. And, um, and uh, yeah, and we'll be, uh, we'll be doing that next week. Um, hopefully it'll be, um, so look for an email with a sign up uh, probably on, I guess on Monday. Um, probably not later today, but probably on Monday. Um, and, uh, and we'll be, we'll be sending out that email and um yeah, and we'll um, and we'll we'll probably be well, we may even encourage since it's a live thing we may uh, we may encourage people to actually participate then too. So uh -huh. that would be exciting. It would be exciting. I put your webmaster email address, Elmer, in the chat yeah. for people if they have any questions about uh, any Cali features or lesson link. That's fine. Certainly, email us, um, and then I guess uh, John, do you want to? Uh, sing us out here. Thanks for coming. <laughs> see you next week. Yeah, we'll all see right. everybody next week. Thank you, everyone. Right. Thanks, Omar. Yep. Bye. Bye.